So I got this uh, Chandler. It's a Bernina. Sometimes Bernina branded their machines Chandler. There's the Bernina name on the back. And when you look at the front, it looks exactly like a Bernina. The only difference being that the name Chandler. Even says made in Switzerland in here. Anyway, so it has like an industrial sewing machine table. It's got a clutch motor, knee lift, go pedal. I don't have a manual with it, but it did come with uh, some feet, bobbin case, and a few bobbins. I just brought this home, and this is how it's sitting. Basically, I kind of break it down into these parts to haul it. So now I'm going to put it back together and see how that thing works or doesn't. This is just going to be how I do a machine when I get it. So it could take uh, just an hour or two or it might take uh, a couple weeks. I never know if I have to get parts or something. But I'm going to get this set up. Just kind of show you how I basically do it. When you're setting your thread tree up, it's very important to get this part right over where the spool is going to be. If you get it off to the side, it's not going to pull off evenly, and that's going to mess with your tensions. And you'll be chasing that all over the place. So this needs to be directly above the spool. Straight up. Or plumb. These hinges, uh, I've never seen any hinges like this, and they've got some really big screw heads in them uh, makes me think that this is kind of uh, maybe after the fact there was also some shims in this machine because these pins are a lot smaller than the holes in the machine I'm gonna check and see if I've got uh, some hinges that'll fit the table and the machine better so I keep the drawer old parts around So I've got some that are round, but uh, yeah, those are not the same size. I'm going to take that out. Oh, there's something. It's the right size. So I have two. Yes. Let me try and see if those work. That fits in there. Yeah, and I think it fits in here too. I'll bring you in here closer. So this is what was in there originally. And then uh, these I had stashed in a drawer. 
I do not know where these came from. But you can see that uh, this is a one screw deal and it's a kind of a chamfered fit. Uh, the, this one is also, this one's a chamfered fit too, but these pins are different. And the, this pin here seems to fit this Chandler better, so I'm going to put these in. Now in here, because uh, there's already two holes, I'm going to, uh, but this is a really good fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make some epoxy smash it down in those holes no not epoxy I'm gonna I'm gonna go with uh, toothpicks or golf tees or some sort of wood uh, pin and use wood glue drive it down in there and then clean this up and uh, then install the the different hinges so this is what I came up with this is some scrap oak I had in uh, literally in my trash can and I just uh, tried to cut out some square pieces of oak. I'm going to sharpen it on one end and kind of try to make it pointed on one end and then this will fit right in there and I'm going to kind of hammer it in with some glue, some wood glue. I got to messing around with this. Uh, this is a disengage knob. Uh, the machine is turning and when I disengage the knob, the, just the wheel runs and then uh, we should be able to, let's see, that. That doesn't seem to be working. We're gonna have to work on the bobbin Winder looks like. So this part works, it goes down and then it will knock itself off. So I'll just go ahead and, uh, so one thing right here is this screw is not set. So we'll go ahead and fix that. That's good. The, me the mechanism works, but it doesn't seem to be catching the, what makes it motivate. This is neat. These screws, usually when you take a plate off like this, the screws are loose, but these screws have uh, C-clips that keep them in so you don't lose them. Very nice. Bernina Swiss made. Cool. On here it says max 15 watts 12 volt. So that's a 12 volt bulb. I did a video recently on different voltages of bulbs. I was dealing with 6 volt and 110 volt. And this one's 12 volt, so there's a third one. Interesting. There's that mechanism. I mean, it looks good. That is, that is stiff. So this uh, has a spring-loaded door. You can see it's just a simple spring there. Really simple, nice. What's this? Plus and minus. I wonder what I'm doing here. 
learning. Okay. There's a plate here. And as I go plus, this plate gets more spring tension on it. Minus. Well, it's all the tension's gone, so that's working. And there is a oh wow, there's a there's a gauge here. Let's see if that works. Well, not yet. Somebody's been in here, and uh, this indicator doesn't seem to be reacting to anything. So this device here has this. Uh, this window and indicator uh, and as I adjust this nothing's happening with that so I'm going to look at that a little more and see if uh, see what's going on there so there's an adjustment here for this tension disc and there's an indicator here and nothing happens with this indicator so I'm going to try to see if I can find out why and uh, you know usually when you go in on a deal like this you find out somebody else has been there and these screws look like you know they've been touched with the screwdriver okay that is a little janky. So, I see the problem. This part has been broke. And, it will need a new knob in order for this to work. Ay, 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 ay. Okay. This knob is how you would uh, adjust the tension. And then there is a finger that uh, rides along this ridge. And because there's a break in it, it just falls, falls past it. And then it, uh, of course, then it's not working. So I need a new plastic knob. I don't believe that uh, Bernina supports these machines anymore. So parts are a challenge. So what I'm seeing in here is uh, super dry. But anywhere where something touches another something and wants to move on it, I'm going to put uh, oil on that. This has a nice metal cam set. This has a nice metal cam set. So that's cool. Um, so I'll lightly oil this. I'll oil this plastic gear. There's a plastic gear right there. This one looks to be in good condition. So we're good there. Bernina has this kind of an interesting feature where this uh, is what holds the top on. So it's a, it's a quarter turn operation. So that screw in the top, he just turned it a quarter. You can see maybe there are some uh, pins on there. Can you see those pins on there? So they just go down through that keeper and then you turn it a quarter and they'll be hooked on there. So those pins will go through the long ways and then you'll turn them this this direction and then they'll be caught on, on the bottom side. So there's two of these.
Okay, I got updates. So that buzzing in the background, that is a parts cleaner. Just, I call it ultrasonic. It vibrates, I don't know. And it cleans up small parts really good. So the, uh, the bobbin winder up here, I took it off uh, from inside here. It's, it's mounted with three screws on the inside of this uh, top cover, which goes up here. So, <clears throat> got that out of there, and what I figured out was the wheel was good, the rubber tire, which is usually what you have to replace, that was good, but the, it was just, it wouldn't turn. And so what that tells me is it's just, you know, somebody put a little drop of oil on it uh, every once in a while, and I don't know if they use sewing machine oil or not, I don't know. So machine oil does that or not, or a different kind of oil. Anyway, it just gets uh, gummed up, one turn. So I got that over in the parts cleaner. <clears throat> I've checked it a couple times. It's it's getting better. Clean it a little bit, then turn it a little bit, and uh, it's uh, it's almost there. But then uh, the light bulb wouldn't work. So I got a new light bulb in it. The old light bulb, uh, as you can see, it's burnt out. Uh, this light bulb is 110 volt, and this has got a clutch motor. And I looked on that clutch motor, and where uh, there's a plug in into the back of the motor, it says six volts. So I found a six volt motor, and you know, it works a lot better. Uh, so the parts cleaner just kicked off, so uh, let's look at that piece. So that is turning pretty good. I'll probably just continue to work it a little bit. Actually, I think right here I can see a C-clip. And I'm just going to pop that off of there and see if this will pull out. And then uh, I'll be able to clean it really good, and then that way it'll... Uh, it should just spin real free uh, before I put it back together. So, but now that it's uh, turning, it'll it'll come out a little easier. So yeah, a little tiny C clip. I saw a movie one time and this guy had uh, some mysterious artifact <laughs> all broken out into a hundred pieces or something and somebody walked in and he said very dramatically, don't touch anything. I have everything laid out in such a way that I can put this back together so you can't move any pieces. Anyway, I don't know exactly how to do that, but I try to do it. So the first thing I take off, I put it down, and then the second thing's next, and third. And so like that, I'll line stuff up. And sometimes that'll help me. Well, uh, I'm not exactly sure how to take this apart uh, all the way, but having taken that off, I can get some more slide movement. And I think I can get some solvent. Uh, and this is loosening up a lot more now. I'm going to get some, some solvent down in here a little better and just kind of work it without taking it completely apart. So my solvent in this case is denatured alcohol. And I believe what makes it denatured is they put a bitterant in it so that people won't drink it. It's very bitter. I think that's all, but otherwise it's just alcohol, and uh, it's just nice when you're working with it. It just smells like booze, like, uh, oh, kind of like uh, oh, vodka or sometimes, sometimes, it, it smells different. It depends on which one you buy. Sometimes it kind of smells like tequila. And anyway, don't drink it. It's bitter.
So uh, I'll put a little bit of alcohol on there and just try to get that alcohol to go in. That alcohol seems to cut old gummy oil really good. So that's why I use it. But you got to be careful, like uh, on old singers and stuff, you don't want to get any, uh, you don't want to get any alcohol on a singer finish. It'll just soften it and take it right off. Don't ask me how I know. Yeah. That's working good. I got some going through the top. I don't know if you can see that or not from holding it in the right spot, but it's starting to, you know, I can spin it a few rotations just freewheeling. That's good. I get these syringes on eBay. I mean, uh, Amazon. And they're nice. You can put whatever you want in there. And I got this. They come with these metal tubes. They're not sharp. They're just, uh, you know, accurate for where you want to put stuff. So a lot of times with older machines, you know, uh, you know a machine from the 90s is, <laughs> could be 30 years old now, which uh, to some of you that might not seem that weird, but to me it seems like, whoa, it's been that long? But anyway, 30 years, 20 years of some oil inside of there, you know, kind of goes dry and just gets gummy. So if it's in in here, and I, you know, I've noticed on Bernina, and I've got some industrial Berninas or Chandlers, they all seem like they just need a lot of work cleaning them up. They just, whatever they're using in Switzerland, it just gets gummy, I guess. I don't know. So... You know, I'm not going to use anything special as far as solvents or oil. I just use plain old sewing machine oil on everything. You know, whether it's an antique singer or this Chandler by Bernina. All right, so I've played around with this long enough now. I think it's it's pretty pretty clean. One of the things about a solvent is not only does it cut some some things that are sticky or gummy or whatever, but if you keep putting it on there, it carries away that whatever it softened, you know. So you just kind of get uh, be generous with it, and it'll carry the dirt away for you. All right, I'm going to blow that out with some air, and then I'm going to oil it, put it back. Don't get, you don't want to get oil on that tire, really on stuff like this. You only need a drop, and it just kind of, you know, it's thin oil, and it'll, Kind of capillary action takes it to where it needs to go. I 
I think this will probably work now. It's a thread cutter there. That's kind of neat. Thread cutter. I'll just tighten these up. Seems to be working in that regard. So this is set up. And I'll try to get this off flush. Kind of tough to get in there. I'm going to get a smaller chisel. So I've got to set this, uh, I've got these hinges kind of in the machine and uh, there's an adjustment in and out. So I'm going to go underneath the machine, loosen the set screw and then that will allow this machine to settle into place. And then once I get the machine in the hole and these in their holes, I can tighten that up and it will be adjusted. Now I can adjust this in and out. Also that. There we go. These are in place and set. Uh, let's see. I can adjust this. Kind of center up the machine and the table. Yeah, I got good gaps all the way around. Now I'll go to the bottom and tighten those set screws. All right, so that did a lot of things for me. Uh, there's an in and out adjustment, and then there's also an adjustment on these 
hinges in this direction and also kind of if you don't have them hooked to the machine they could go in this direction so I think basically by doing it this way I've aligned all three axes now I can drill for these screws and install the screws and this hinge installment will be done so whenever I'm drilling holes inside of a fixture like this uh, one thing that helps me get the hole exactly centered is a set of these bits and they come in various sizes they have different size drill bits and uh, some different size holders so there's a whole set and then basically what you do is you get the right size and uh, just try to get the drill bit that is the right size for your screw and then this uh, has kind of got a spring loaded deal and when you set it in there, it centers itself in the hole. So that is pretty handy. So this isn't the best set in the world, but uh, I've used it a few times and it, it's working good for me. So, you know, if you only use something occasionally, this would probably be a good one for you. Now that this hole is located, I'm going to uh, drill it a little deeper. I've got my bit set in such a way that it, uh, you know, it cannot get through the thickness of the table. Not that that would be a big deal exactly, but I'd rather not. That works great. And uh, whoever put this machine in before has the cushions on the front good. And this is uh, nice and flush. Feels good. So that's, uh, that's ready to go there. Alright, so I've got the machine in the table and I've got the belt on it. When I bought this machine, uh, the nice lady that I bought it from said she was a seamstress and she had a singer and she just preferred that machine to this one. And so these are, these are highly liked machines and so, you know, I'm trying to figure out why didn't she like this one. And so, you know, I'm finding some things out. Uh, some things are kind of gunky from old lubrication and I've had maybe four Berninas now most of them in industrial like the 217 but in every case I've found with the Bernina of this age I've had to do a lot of cleaning and lubricating because the old lubrication has set up and not just gunky but just like set up almost like glue and so I'm finding some things like bobbin winder wouldn't work. We'll have to install it and make sure. But uh, the adjustment here, I've done a lot of lubrication and cleaning on this slide. It wouldn't hardly adjust. It felt wrong. Just felt like it was catching on something. But now it's going good. One other thing that could just be simple as when you go to move this machine, it's... It's set up, right? It doesn't want to move. Well, it's got a clutch motor on it, and a clutch motor has a brake built into it. And so when your foot is off the pedal, it's it's a brake. So, you, you know, in factories, they just go, wow, and they just want to slam on the brakes, I guess. So in order to get around that, you have to just, just push the pedal down a little bit, and then 
this machine, you can see it moves really easy. I'll lock in the engagement, but if I push down on the foot pedal a little bit, it's real easy. And if I let go, boom, it's, it's locked up. This brake is really, really solid. So that's, if you don't know, also there's a danger when you're pushing down to release the brake. You could also go a little too far and it takes off on you. So that's not, that's not a good sewing experience. So I'm just finding a few things like that. The light bulb um, was the wrong voltage, so that didn't work. Got this set up on the motor, and so what I'm going to do now that I've got it set up is I'm going to do some more cleaning and some more lubrication. Uh, I want to run this machine, and I want to put just a very light coat of oil on, on this cam stack. Really nice cam stack. Foot lift works. Let's look at the bottom. There's some lint down here. Okay, and I want to get inside this cover and look in there. So this needed to come off just because this oil is it's so old it's yellow. This gasket it's it's kind of like uh, it's like goo now. I don't know <laughs> what's happened to this gasket, but that's going to have to be replaced. There's a sponge in here. I'll be able to clean this out. I think yeah, that seems to be holding together. I'll clean this out and reuse this sponge. So I'll have to try to find some gasket for this. I can make a gasket. People always ask me what I use to clean my machines. If I do something that is pretty dirty already, like a lot of oil and stuff, I'm going to use a diesel fuel and a spray bottle. This is a rubber gasket, or I think it's rubber. It's stuck pretty good, and I've been looking for Bernina parts, and they're expensive. So I'm going to uh, just leave this gasket here because I'll be able to reuse it if it stays like this. And uh, it'll make it a little harder to clean this out, but uh, it doesn't look very dirty. So I'm just going to try to get the oil out of it, and uh, that way when I put new fresh oil in, it'll be good to go. This gear looks good, too. Real good. So I'll just clean that out and put that back together. I thought this gasket would be like this gasket. But it's better, so that's good.
when you're start starting these little screws, if you'll make sure that they get started by hand, and you can like turn it one, two, three, four, you know, you can turn it a few times by hand, you'll never cross thread your screws if you make sure you get them good and started by hand. So I can turn this in so I know that that I can tighten that up with a screwdriver now. But they're kind of tough in the beginning or at least the first three were. This one started a little easier. But once you turn it in two or three screw threads and you know you're good. So I clean this in the parts cleaner. And let's see, how's this go in here? I don't know. Is that it? Well, it's either that way or this way. Oh no, it could be this way. I'm thinking this way. Okay, so hold that like that. There's only one way for that to go. Okay. Got our sponge back. And a fresh gasket. I told you to do everything by finger, but sometimes you can't get your fingers in there. So if you just keep a light touch on the screwdriver, you can tell that way too. And I can tell this is going in real easy, so I'm good there. So if you can't use your finger to tighten it up or snug it up, just use a real light touch on your tool. Feel through the screwdriver. So I got a new gasket. Everything's cleaned out. Now I'm just going to do these screws uh, kind of in a star pattern or crisscross pattern and just a little bit at a time. You don't want to tighten one down all the way and then go to the next one. You kind of want to do a little bit at a time in a crisscross pattern. i am got everything pretty much tight as I want and I'm just going to go 
around in a circle now, just so I don't miss any. But they're pretty much tightened down where I want, and I'm just checking them now. So somebody put, uh, at first I thought this was a marker, but uh, it's actually probably like some uh, vinyl stickers, kind of, and then some old glue. So I'm going to see if I can get those off. Hey, this says Bernina on it. The Little Chiseler. Uh, this guy, uh, I bought some parts from this guy, and he sent, sent this. Uh, real good company for this kind of stuff. Maybe I should call him up for that knob. I forgot. <laughs> uh, this is yeah, serendipity. The nice thing is, uh, you know, with the plastic um, chiseler, you can get uh, against the paint. You're not worried about keep scratching the paint. And yeah, that's peels those up really nice. Now I just try to get this glue off. Oh, this is cool. There's a clip here on the inside of the machine. This clip holds a pin. Okay, close. There it is. This pin goes into the back and this clip holds it in. It's the back cover. Oh, nice. Now I can clean out that. So upon further investigation of this back cover and that clip, um, I found that on the inside of this, this has been broken in the past, as has this one. Fortunately, one still remains. But on the back, you can see part of it that is still here. And then over here, there's the broken part remains. And inside, there's that another one of these clips. So one, two, and then this one over here uh, has another clip also. I don't see exactly how to get to it. Probably have to remove this light. A couple of screws here, remove that light. So. If you need to remove this, there are three clips in this machine. One, two, and three. Hope that helps somebody in the future so that uh, perhaps you don't break this back cover. And you can see right here is, uh, is this clip. The clip just pulls off and then that allows the plate to just come out like that. So, Two screws, get to the clip. Okay, so now I have all three clips and I've got the little pieces of plastic still on there so I'm going to see about gluing those back on. Why not? Got nothing to lose. Let me test a little alcohol over here. Test spot. And I don't see any sort of reaction with the plastic. So, continuing on, I'm going to put alcohol where this 
broke off. So it looks dirty. And I'm going to try to prep this for some super glue. Now, I don't know if super glue is going to work on this type of plastic or not. But in the past, I found that it was the best thing after testing several glues on some plastics. The only thing that worked and worked well was, was super glue. I think even you know, on the particular type of plastic I tried, the uh, epoxy failed. So I'm going to go right to super glue on this one. Do that again. It looks cleaner. Now with that back plate, I have some more cleaning opportunities and adjustment opportunities. This is a little bit loose. Now it's rock solid. Much better. Mild soap and water again. Toothbrush. dry I'll show you this so this was in the drawer with the machine and this tag goes on here uh, and maybe not that direction let's see here all right so that's the embroidery direction And that is the sewing direction. So yeah, goes like this. So I'm going to see about getting that back on here. I'm going to make it super flat. And that sure looks a lot better. Remember that uh, every tool is a hammer. So in this case, this nice plastic won't uh, mess up this any more than it's already been marred. But I've got that looking pretty good now. Pretty flat. Got those three pins back on now, and let's see how it goes back on. Hey, we're in.
What I did was uh, I bought another top off of eBay, and uh, it's not exactly the same. Uh, this is off of a 930, and this is a, a 950. So the, the top's a little different, um, but it's got the same <coughs> tensioner in it. So I want to take the tensioner out of this and put it in here. Seems tight. I'm gonna loosen it. Better. Alright. That's doing a thing where if I kind of shake it, it'll fall. So that's about what we want. I need to look this needle up. I think I need a bigger one. I don't know if I have one on hand. This is 287WH, uh, which that doesn't mean anything to me, so I'll have to cross-reference that. All right, so my way of, uh, I guess the American way, I don't know, uh, this cross-references to DBX1 or 71X1. Of which I have a few. Here's an 18. That's probably I don't think that was the right needle. That's a home sewing machine needle.
Right, sewing. Victory. Okay, so uh, now what I will do is I'll finish cleaning this thing up and uh, then I'll make some sort of video with it. I might do uh, all the, you know, all the various stitches. I'll wash my hands, that kind of thing. Clean up my tools. You know, I got a mess here because, you know, uh, maintenance. No, I need better material. And anyway, I got the needle straightened out. We got uh, the hook to pick up thread. We got it sewing. Uh, we got everything working. So zigzag, straight stitch, stitch width, stitch length works. I'll get some proper material. I'll spend a little bit of time setting up my tension. And then we should have a good functioning uh, Chandler made by Bernina made in Switzerland. Okay, well, I don't know. Uh, this video is a little different than what I normally do. So let me know if you like this type of thing. Leave me a comment. So hopefully that lets you know kind of what you're getting into when you buy a used machine. So like when I had to buy this, uh, that, uh, that whole top just to get one mechanism on a Bernina you know, that's money that maybe you didn't plan on spending. So unless you buy a machine from somebody like me who does all this and then and I'll sew all the stitches and I'll do maybe a buttonhole with it and stuff and let you see that, oh yeah, everything works on that machine. And so that would be worth buying. But maybe you like to work on machines, I do. And so you might take a chance on uh, one of these, one of these older machines and uh, get it back to going. So there was a lot of things kind of on this that were just not quite right. And now I think this machine is gonna make somebody happy again. It's gonna start sewing. We'll get this thing to somebody who can use it and sew with it and get one back, back going. Get one back on the road. All right, thanks a lot for watching.